Hello everyone and welcome back to Planet Zoo. I am McSnazzy and we are in Timber Gorge again today and we are going to be building our third animal habitat and let me just tell you guys, I am super excited to share this video with you. This is the longest I have ever spent building anything in this game so far. Uh, this is the most detail I've ever done. This is probably the longest video. Uh, in terms of recording time, uh, when I edit it, it's a little less, and I did a lot of detail work off camera, but it'll look good in the end. But as you can tell by the title, the thumbnail, of course, we are building the orangutans today, specifically the Berean orangutans, uh, and that's in Borno, uh, which is in Indonesia. So technically, it's Asian. So we're gonna we're gonna add it to the Asian area we've kind of been working up over here. Even though traditionally, I wouldn't necessarily say orangutans would be considered uh, an Asian animal. I'm not entirely sure, but usually they kind of put them in with all the other uh, apes and uh, monkeys, etc. So here, it's really a lot of the initial path work that I did in setting up this sort of uh, exhibit was done off camera. Uh, the footage got corrupted, so you couldn't see it going from just grass to this, which, you know, it, it's fine because there's a lot of footage in this video and you're gonna see a lot. Uh, one of the things I wanted to address in this video was, hey, our zoo's super flat. So that's sort of an issue. Um, I don't necessarily know if zoos are super, like, uneven terrain. Uh, I assume a lot are pretty flat, but we need some height variance for sure because it just uh, looks a little too unnatural and like super flat. Super flat and it's, it's a lot easier to build in flat, like flat spaces, but really it looks a lot more realistic if we make a lot of height variation and sort of with this feel that we're going for with this zoo, the uh, super overgrown you know, in the middle of a forest feel. Looks a lot more natural if there's some some hills and stuff. And we're gonna start doing that right now, so here we go. This is some little bit more height variance other than that mountain I built in the middle of the habitat, which will look better in the future. I'm gonna put rocks and foliage on it. You'll see later. Wow, that's done off camera, but I wanted to show doing this path work on camera. So we're gonna put the path sort of raising up up here so they can look down into the enclosure and it just adds a little bit of height variance. It's not it's not a ton yet. I think we'll move and do some bigger height variance, but we're gonna sort of move up towards that, you know, slowly incline and then decline, etc. Sort of make it look a lot more natural than it than just super flat. And then when it's super flat, it's kind of annoying because you have to do those raised paths to look into the exhibits or you have to sink every exhibit, which isn't a big deal. I think it's pretty realistic to sink a lot of exhibits down so guests can look over into it but raising the train up making it look like it's sink down but actually it's at the the regular level of the zoo is also another great technique to use so that's what we're doing here we're raising the path on the one side so that it looks like uh it's sunk down when it's really just at the main uh height of the zoo and I, I really like how it looks. It looks a lot more natural. I think we'll do this a lot more in the future because it just it just adds a better feel. You know, guests are gonna walk around and you'll see when I go through and we do glam shots and maybe a little bit of real time footage walking through it because I think it really needs it for this one. I've done a ton of off camera work that I did a bunch of details. Really, you can only do justice and see if I show you in real time. So we'll, we'll walk through in uh, first person like we have been doing in the past videos, but I think I'll put a couple glam shots at the end as well, just to, you know, mix it up. Do a little bit of both. I think uh, both warrant niceness. But we're gonna extend this field that we're doing. As we move through the park, we're gonna have to keep putting rocks on the river. And I think we'll put another river once we move past this river, just so we have, you know, it's Timber Gorge. It's, you know, lots of rivers whatever I think it looks nice uh, the rock work is it's getting a little framey already in this Asian area uh, when you see how much foliage I put into this uh, orangutan habitat because they they do love a lot of foliage they live in jungles but we'll get there when we get there here I'm just making it look like our our regular style and I, I like the cozy style that the zoo's been doing our zoo is super cozy so far uh, especially in this Asian area when you walk around it's like you're kind of exploring, and I think zoos do that a lot. Uh, the zoos I've been to, they're very wooded, 
Uh, but I live in, you know, the Midwest, sort of like the northern Midwest, so uh, maybe that's different in other zoos and other uh, biomes and hemispheres and areas of the U.S. or just anywhere in the world, but up here there's they're super wooded, they're very, uh, you kind of explore, it's, it's not super wide open or anything. So let me talk about what we're doing here. This is the uh, <laughs> biggest challenge of the enclosure. I'm really happy with how it turned out in the end uh, because it was a big challenge. So if future builders uh, listen to me, heed my warning. Build your building before you build the path or the exhibit around it. It'll make it so much easier. So what I do here is I outline the exhibit and then build the path when I'm building this building for the orangutans, which is gonna end up being the orangutan house. And we'll get more to that in a second, but build your building before you lay it out. It'll make it so much easier because I have to make a bunch of separate uh, editing groups here just to make the shape work around the area I've done because there's a little bit of a curve in spots and there's also, it's just a very irregular shape. It looks cool in the end, in natural but it also looks a little sloppy if you look very closely I try to cover up a lot of the sloppiness that you have to do when you work with the regular shapes in this game because the building system just doesn't want to work with it because the ways that the grids work and everything and whatever it, it's it's a nice building system for some things but this is not one of it making your regular shapes non blocks non circles uh, non triangles does not work but it looks good in the end and we'll, we'll see it later I cut out a lot of the crazy building here because I fiddle around with it for forever but an orangutan house you know if you go to a zoo usually a lot of the apes and uh, primates have these houses that they go into when it's uh, you know raining outside or anything outside they just like a house they have a place to go into and usually you can see in them at least the zoos I've been to you can look into their house and they have some like uh, climbing areas and play things within the house because you know in the winter uh, at least where I live in the winter I bet they don't go outside they stay within the house most of the time and sort of play around in there so I wanted to make it look like it has a lot of natural light that it's like an orangutan house but it's it's a nice house you know it's a little more naturalistic even though it's made of like concrete and most of these buildings if you look them up are made of concrete so I wanted to make it look like a nice building where they could live into and it really looks nice when we get to it I'm gonna cut here to cut all this work that we're doing uh, we get to here we're gonna switch to these windows because they fit a lot better for these like skylights so we can have a lot of this natural light coming in even though in this game it doesn't necessarily come in super well but I, I would think if this was like in the real world, it would be pretty appropriate to have a lot of this skylight area. Even though the guests can only really see from two angles, it it helps with the uh, welfare of the animals so they don't get stressed that guests are always looking at them. And so they can have a lot of natural light so it looks like they're outside in the winter, etc. Yeah, but as you'll see here, please take my warning. Uh, build the building first if you're going to build a building that would have because it's so hard to do these angles I have to make a bunch of these separate building groups like right here I have to do it and it doesn't really fit so we make it work in the end and cover it up a bit but man it's a pain in the butt but you know it looks a little natural because it has to fit in the space here that we've made and I like this little walkthrough area that I do here that you kind of see we're building around it that they can walk in and look at the uh, orangutan and sort of we'll put the education uh, screens there as well so that they can be educated and this is sort of a thing I see a lot in you know real zoos you have these little walkthrough areas that are separate from the main path that you can just kind of go under a little bit of shade and look at the animals in there while they're like napping or something they're just playing around with all the enrichment tools they have because there are a lot of nice enrichment tools in this game uh, and there's a ton for the orangutans and they're really cool to watch when they use them but I'll let it play here for the rest of building this structure. There's not a lot more. We do a lot off camera because it gets really wonky and we have to do a lot of little workarounds and tricks and it takes me far too long to do than it should have. But 
It's okay. It's okay. I edited it all out so you guys don't have to sit through it, but I'll be back in a second. here we're back after some of that we cut here we built that little indoor area you briefly saw there we'll look more at that when we uh, go back in real time in the glam shots but we're gonna start doing the foliage work now this was the most fun part of the whole build as you can see I did a lot of rock work along the the angle there to make it look like a natural cliff where the path was also on this mountain didn't want to fully make it the rock color because I think that's a little too like it's just the one color i wish we could change the terrain paint to this biome i know we're in the the taiga with the zoo but we could change it to the tropical biome that the orangutans like to make the mountain look a little more natural but when we put all the foliage on it it looks really good so i'm, I'm really happy with that mountain and it's a nice little it, it gets rid of the whole flat feel we have in the zoo so far and orangutans if you look up you know like borno they have like a big mountain in the middle of the uh, little land it's sort of an island in the middle of the island and the, just the jungle goes all the way up the mountain so I kind of wanted to make the foliage go up the mountain like that but as for foliage work here orangutans live in super dense jungles so we're gonna put a ton of foliage and I was really happy that they live in super dense jungles because it was really fun to put all this foliage down make it look super natural and it makes the game a little framey because uh, we put so much damn foliage down, but I think it looks good. And we're going to add a little bit of a pool here. It's going to look real nice. We're going to add some special effects into it later. Uh, a little bit of splash effect, so it looks like a natural pool. And they actually drink from that. Uh, not the intention necessarily, but I'm happy that they do. I still have a, a water thing for them. But a lot of this foliage is fun. If you look at, you know, where these rankings originate super dense jungles lots of trees but we still have to make a view that the guests can see the animals or they'll get upset because it is a zoo at the end of the day so we want the guests to be able to see the animals of course so it's kind of a balancing act of how much foliage and natural look we want to put in and uh you know still account that the guests have to see and there has to be viewing areas but i i want to lean a little bit towards uh making it look super natural before we make you know super duper lots of views for the guests so they're like ultra mega happy etc i'd rather make it look more natural because uh for a video standpoint you know you want to make sure you want to see some nice looking builds um i want to make some natural builds because i really like making the animals welfare super high um but we're, we're gonna make some viewing areas in this zoo there's like or er, in this zoo in this enclosure for the orangutans there's there's two really good viewpoints on the outside and then you can go into that little area and look in the house i think that's perfect you know that's what we're gonna try to do going forward for most animals i think i mentioned it in the, la the red panda video is that you know a lot of zoos try to cut down on you know two to three areas of viewing so that you know you're really focused on two to three areas and animals have a a place to escape if they need to like escape in terms if they're stressed out that they're being looked at constantly they have an area to go to get away from the guest eyes so that's perfect and then it sort of makes your zoo flow a lot better you don't want just a big circle where you can look in and see everything because it just wouldn't it wouldn't work people would crowd in weird spots and you kind of want to funnel traffic into certain areas that's that works well for the layout of the pathing especially in this game because the the guests will gather around a certain area to look at the animal and you want to control where that area is so you can funnel the path off so what, what i've been doing is we're, we're moving the path off 
you know, t for the viewing areas off the main traversing path that guests will use to get further into the park to other areas. We're kind of cutting it off from that and then going around it so that you look in a viewing area where you're supposed to be there looking at the animal. You're not going to crowd any traffic that's going elsewhere. So here we're just going to add some of the enrichment items, uh, a lot of this climbing stuff that we're going to put in. I am super bad at making these climbing things. I mentioned a little in the Red Panda video that I think I'd get better. I have not gotten better yet. I don't know why I decided to do orangutans right after the Red Pandas with more climbing, but we did. It looks great. I am so happy with this enclosure. If you look in real life, if you look up like orangutan habitat zoo, on Google, you will see that it's just a ton of these huge climbing areas with a ton of ropes just going off it. Because they really like to just walk around in the vines in real life, so they have in these zoos just a ton of rope areas where they can climb around. And it kind of looks silly in this game because they have no ropes yet that the animals can use. But they only use these logs, so I kind of have to make these logs stretch across the whole exhibit from climbing area to climbing area to make them happy and to make it look more realistic but they really like a ton of climbing area and really the climbing area is more about the long long logs that they climb on than it is the large platforms in terms of the area that they that they care about in terms of climbing and we, we have to deal with that a little so we're gonna have to add a lot more of these climbing areas because ring things love that and it looks a little crowded but you know it's realistic it's what it's like in real life. It works in terms of practicality of, of the game, and it works in terms of just realistic aspect. It looks nice. The The animals use it. The orangutans like it. So what are you going to do? You know, it is what it is. It looks a little crowded, but it's, it's supposed to be like that. So, you know, I think it just looks good. Um, and I'm just super happy with this, with this exhibit. And we've had a little bit of issues of them getting stuck on some of these, so I have to remove a little bit of these climbing things. And it said they liked a lot of adults. I'm not really sure what the sweet spot is, because I feel like they live in bigger families. But I had two males in there, and it seemed like it was an issue. Like, there wasn't enough space, or socially, there were too many. Maybe it's a male thing. So I took one of the males out. We have three females in there. I wanted to have a lot of orangutans within the exhibit because I did make it quite a large exhibit so I wanted it to have be full with a lot of orangutans and I think there's more than enough space for them in terms of growing their population etc and if we've looked at the other animals in the zoo while I've been building stuff really a lot of them have been populated a ton there are so many flamingos there's like 40 flamingos I've had to release some to the wild because there was just way too many and they're breeding like rabbits it's crazy and then the red pandas have also had some babies as well and a lot of babies so i need to look back at that because maybe one of them's an adult now that i need to deal with but we do a little bit of a fence here i wanted to build a custom fence because uh none of the in-game fences really gave the feel of this habitat that i wanted to give off and we we do a ton more along the sides here off camera and I also built the first bathroom <laughs> that we have in the game because we don't have a bathroom yet and guests have been complaining so we build one off to the side here and uh, lot, lots packed in lots of off camera stuff that we did on this build as well and just I think this is a really quality build I'm really happy with it best thing I've ever built spent so much time on this too lots of recording hours had so much so much recording I had to edit out because it was just this video was going to be too long, but we'll jump into the live action now. So here we are in real person. We're going to walk around in first person first here. This is sort of the entrance here. We built another sign. I think I'm going to do this for every habitat now. But it's right next to the red pants. It looks great in this crossroads. You know where you're going. And I love all the, the environment work we did here. Here's the bathroom I built. Pretty simple. Uh, I want it to look very generic because it's a bathroom. You don't want a bathroom to look super cool. But I think it was a good looking bathroom. Uh, here's more of that foliage work. I love what we did along these paths. It's nice and cozy. This little view I did here too. It'll look better when we fill out more of the other area, but I wanted to leave it a little open, not too super wooded, even though I like the wooded feel. But we're going to go off that area later on, but here we go. This is the path. This is the exhibit right here. really like how it turned out. 
this area just looks super good right here and they're the orangutans you can see them down there and I just love it I built this little off area where you could sit you can learn a little with a little bit of uh, rock work again we do a little bit of uh, height variation here <laughs> not not a flat zoo anymore you know it's like a nice little nook and I really really love that I that was probably my f favorite part of doing the outside but here's the orangutan house looks awesome wish there was a bigger sign so I'd have to use big lighters but I think the big lighters work but here's the nice view into their little indoor area I think it looks really cool uh, I like this and they got a little educational along the sides look like something you'd see in real life you know you'd walk in to read and we made the building work even though it's a weird shape and in the future I will definitely build my buildings first and then build the habitat around it but here's the upper viewing area we built that little awning custom out of uh, wood pieces and I think it looks great you can see an orangutan down there too uh, it's, it's right next to the red panda habitat you can see him over this is sort of my idea but I, I'm so happy with it it just looks so good even though the logs are kind of stretched out and look kind of out of place but we don't have any rope that we can sort of do those pieces with so you know you gotta do what you gotta do we gotta make sure the animals are happy and they're happy with those logs the, the long climbing areas that they can do and here we'll hop out of first person let's look at some of these in like sort of cinematic shots wow it looks so good i love how this uh, habitat turned out it fits perfectly it really looks the zoo's coming along so nice like this asian area i know we've really only done this area so far but i think the next video we're gonna do another big exhibit like this with a lot of off-camera detail work so it's just gonna come along slowly but surely but that building looks nice we made it work it looks kind of janky but you know you, you do what you gotta do and everything looks good I'm, I'm just really happy with uh, everything that we built here here's a little shot of the orangutans messing around with the foraging uh, enrichment tool but thanks everyone for watching i think this is the best video we've recorded yet um i'm really 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 happy with what we built here uh there's that pool those water effects i put in uh, really happy with this build looks great uh, super satisfied I kind of want to take this level of detail into the remaining of the zoo you know as we get towards these bigger animals we're gonna build bigger exhibits that look super nice so thank you all for watching I hope to see you next time please like comment and subscribe and thank you again see you next time